Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I've got a really fun activity for you today that is the perfect scrap busting activity to do with small scraps of fabric and also strips of things like old sheets or old pillowcases. So reclaimed fabrics, reused fabrics, things that you otherwise might not have a purpose for and we're going to be creating this fabric scrap necklace. So we'll be creating a braid um, using just a very simple plaiting technique but then I'll show you how I finish them at the end to make a loop. Um, we'll be making these Suffolk puff or yo-yo beads which is an idea I've come up entirely um, on my own and I haven't seen anyone else do it so I am very excited to be sharing that with you. Um, and I'll also be showing you how you can make the individual Suffolk puffs or yo-yos using either a um, little Suffolk puff maker like this one from Clover um, made in Japan or you can just do it um, by hand as well without any little device so I'll show you both methods. Um, if you want to make ones about this size which is what I would recommend for the Suffolk puff beads um, I'd suggest you have a circle about four centimeters across. Um, so this is called a 20 millimeter but I think that's just the um, yeah, from the center out to the outer because when I look at it on my little measuring it's about four centimeters by four centimeters across four centimeters that way. So I'll just put my ruler down out of the way because otherwise it will go clattering to the floor although the floor has carpet so it won't clatter too much. Um, and then I'm hoping I could, will also have time to show you how you can make a beautiful little, it could either be a pendant or it could be a brooch and just using the single Suffolk puffs or yo-yos um, inside it and using the um, braided plashed um, trim as the wrapping outside. And I was thinking even for the journal makers out there, this would make a really lovely little sort of journal embellishment and what you could do is um, take a piece of ribbon or lace like I'm doing here and tuck it through it. That could sit on the front of your journal and then it could yeah, tie around or it could even come around and tie at the, the front if your journal was there. Um, and it could come around and tie just to the, to the side of it. So that's another fun idea. But yeah, it'd also be great as a little brooch um, or a pendant. And I just love how it starts to take on some of sort of nature's bit of a look of nature and I've been really into my nature's textures play and I'm thinking this plaited um, fabric would be a great base for some of my na nature's textures pieces. So first of all I will show you what the beads look like and I'm just going to slide this one off. Um, so the bead I've created just from three Suffolk puffs or yo-yos and then stitch them together using ladder stitching technique which I will show you which is often used in English paper piecing um, and it makes a great um, shape because it's almost rounded so it's like a bead but it's got a hollow center um, which is readily able to then be threaded through even with something relatively relatively thick um, and then these go down onto it and you can either have them all bunched up together like that or you can spread them out and they will generally stay um, because they'll sort of hold onto the, the fabric so they'll stay in their place and you can change around the order of them. You could just have a couple like three down there or a single one or you can add um, lots more on and I'll yeah, show you how I've done um, the end piece. So it's all just made out of fabric. It feels lovely against the, the skin and then um, yeah it's got an easy way to just um, latch it and wear that at the, the back of the neck. So first of all let's kick off with um, the demo of how to use the um, Clover yo-yo maker and then I'll show you how to do it by hand as well. And the other thing um, that I will say is that with this clover one you can use all sorts of fabrics even ones that are a bit more slinky and like a um, more of a synthetic fabric they still work fine with the other method the hand method it's sometimes a bit harder because you're turning and holding the pieces if it's slinky it's a bit more difficult so I might even show you with this one and again just showing you how little fabric you actually need. Another little tip if you do have the Clover um, yo-yo maker or Suffolk puff maker is to put a dot um, at a point on it because that will just help you with lining up because you always want to line up one of these um, little dashes with it. So if I put my little point there um, it's very easy to line it up and clip it in. So we're clipping it in. Um, I didn't don't even need that much fabric around it actually so I'm just going to move it a bit down 
You only need a small, small section of fabric around it. And then I usually just, um, at this point, just trim roughly around. You want to leave about the same, same amount around. On some of them, I've even done it with less fabric than this, but I won't make it too tricky for myself when I'm demoing it. Put those in my little mosaic scrap bag. Let's keep all my very small fabric scraps and they can go into my little mosaic styles where I, now I had threaded up a needle. Where has my threaded needle gone? I'm not sure. Hopefully it won't stick into me somewhere. Nope, I can't see it, so we might just thread up another another needle. I'm sure I had done one before. Can I see it? No, I cannot. So I'm just using a polyester cotton. Well, not a cotton, but a polyester thread. And so... The other thing that the dot helps with is it gives me a point that when I'm working around, I know where I've started. And so what I'm doing is using my finger to hold down the fabric at the back and then I'm going to pop through catching a bit of the fabric. I've got a knot in the end of my thread and then I'm going to just work my way around, coming up and down through each of the marked holes on the template and holding the fabric down at the back as I go. And so that these little um, clover, or I think you can probably get other brands, um, they do make the job very fast. I used to just make them by hand until I found one of these. This one I got in the op shop um, up in Alpine, Victoria a little while ago, um, complete with a whole lot of lovely little yo-yos that someone had made but not used. In fact, I've used some of those ones that I got at the op shop there, these little ones from that fabric, which is beautiful. So I've used them in some of my beads already. But this definitely makes the job very fast, very easy, but you can do it by hand if you don't have a tool. But I think I will probably buy some more of the yo-yo ones, or sorry, the clover um, little tools in different, different sizes. Because I quite like some of my vintage style, well actually vintage, um, I think some of these are even feed sack um, yo-yos. And that size is quite nice to use in slow stitch projects as well. But this size I think is um, really good for... Um, the beads. So now I'm back to where I've got my black dot. So I'm going to just do one more stitch. So basically doing an overlapping stitch, but not try, trying not to catch um, where the first stitch was. So just in a slightly different position. Um, trying not to get a knot on the front would be good. So at that point, I've just done one extra stitch there. And then these are really easy. You just pop them out, push, push them through that hole. You slip your little plate out and when you're putting your plate in you're making sure you can see the writing on the back I should have said that before then you're going to just fold as you pull the thread you're going to just push the um, raw edge into the center so that it just bunches up in the right direction otherwise it can sometimes want to turn itself the other way and so you just do that as you go around making sure you get your raw edges just hiding into the middle See, I've got one loose little thread there. Get rid of that one. And it's always fascinating to see what colours end up coming out where on your Suffolk Puff. You never quite know what they're going to look like till you've, you've got them done. I'm just going to get rid of those loose bits of thread. So at this point, um, it's all gathered up nicely. If it ever sort of doesn't gather up e evenly, I'll sometimes just use the end of my needle and just sort of put it into the middle and just push anywhere out if it's, something's a bit bunched up. But this one looks very good so I'm going to get it really nice and tight and then I'm just going to put a little um, holding knot in place by going through making a loop and then putting my needle through that and pulling it nice and tight to hold um, the gather nice and tightly and then if I'm ever worried I'll just do a second little knot as well you want to use a nice um, a strong thread but one that um, won't um, yeah, it won't be too too coarse now I've managed to make a little knot there but that's okay I'm just going to secrete that down so sometimes I then pop through um, just over to one side or in the crease and then I might do another little holding knot there just to make sure that it stays secure and then I like to secrete the end back into the yo-yo so I go back in with my needle 
and in fact you can even pop out the other side you can pull your thread through pull your thread nice and tight so it's sort of um, more threads popping out um, than you need and then snip it off and then that little end of thread will pop back into your yo-yo so that's a sweet little yo-yo it's got a lovely um, different pattern on the back and particularly in this version um, you can still see the the backs of them um, so yeah it's good to kind of um, have some nice nice backs when you're doing the little brooch or pendant so that's the method using um, the clover suffolk puff making um, machine if you want to do one um, using just like a, another circle shape. Um, I think these Bon Ma Mum lids are pretty similar in size so you could definitely if you've got some of these uh, you could use that and what I would then do um, is just get my piece of fabric and again this is showing you that you can use um, all sorts of all sorts of fabrics. narrow strips as long as they're sort of um, yeah enough of a enough of a circumference now you could just roughly cut around this um, holding it or you could use um, a friction marker or even you're not actually going to see this marking anyway um, this is just one that does erase with heat but it's not going to matter anyway you can draw around it and then you can cut it out I'll try not to cut my thread that got caught but any circle, you could even um, yeah, download a circle and put it onto some cardboard. Um, as in print one out off the internet if you didn't have something to trace around. But I'm sure if you have a look around your house, you'll find something of an appropriate size. You could also make the bead smaller. I've just found that the sort of four centimetres is pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to put a knot in my thread again. And I'll show you how you can use thicker fabrics as well, particularly to make the ones that I used in here, which I think are good if they're, they have a bit more um, texture for that. Whereas for the beads, having the more flexible, softer fabrics is, is good. But yeah, I just love that I can use synthetics and things and um, I wouldn't often use those in my regular slow stitch. But for something like this, it is, it is A-OK. -okay. So I'm going to just fold over an edge to start. I've got my little knot. I'm just going to cut the end off because we don't want the end um, poking, poking out later. So I'm going to have it folded over like that with a little end on the inside. And then I'm just going to work my way around just doing a running stitch. So now I'm going to come from the, from the back. And then I'm going to continue around so I'm just folding it over as I go and just sort of advancing uh, now you can do these sort of as gathered or as ungathered as you want um, I'm just sort of going a little bit forward with each of my each of my steps and just trying to keep it mostly folded evenly as you can see when you're not using the machine it is just that little bit of extra effort because you've got to keep folding it yourself and sometimes pulling the needle needle out So yeah, the well, I'm not usually one to kind of go, oh, buy buy this thing. Um, I usually sort of like to have make make your own. Um, I do think the clover um, or the yo-yo makers do make it extra easy. Like I've been able to get so many of these just done in yeah one evening, um, sitting watching some YouTube videos last night, and a bit of um, build a new life in the country or build a new house. I think build a new life in the country that I've been watching old episodes on, on Prime. Got me all revved up today because we're trying to yeah get my my house ready to to rent out. So yeah I'm just busy getting all those last last bits and pieces done. It's hard when you work the working week and you kind of just want to relax on your weekends but yeah it'll be good when we can when we can get that done don't need to be maintaining two houses and I don't know if it's like other parts of the world but there's quite a rental rental shortage a bit of a rental crisis in Australia at the moment so it'll be good to be able to give give someone a home
and a lot of places aren't. Um, I think they, they're meant to sort of be pet friendly these days, but yeah, I'll definitely be happy for someone to have a dog. Won't be a problem. I've got tiling, tiling throughout, so it's very easy, easy care. And then put yeah rugs down if you want, but yeah the tiling. Um, I thought maybe when I got it that it would be really cold in in winter and things, but no, nope, it seems to have good sort of thermal qualities. So in summer it feels nice, in winter it's fine as well. So yeah, I was really happy I tried this idea. It actually came about because when I was at the Australasian quilt show, I saw someone had on one of the stands um, a little necklace where they had, let me see if I've got my little prototype that I was playing, playing with. No. They'd basically just got three rounds of just raw edge fabric and then um, glued them together um, almost like so half of each of them were glued to another half of them and so it made a little three prong um, shape but more like a star almost like a three-sided um, star and so I had that in my head and I was thinking oh yeah that's okay but I'm not so fussed about the I don't really like the raw edges because they'd wear if you were using it on a necklace or something um, and then I had in my mind I thought oh wouldn't it be great if you used <laughs> Slavic puffs because they're not raw edged um, and so I came home and tried it out and I went, yep, this is, this is pretty super. So when I get round to where I started, I'm going to put in then, um, another stitch. So again, overlapping where I started and then I'm going to pull it, pull it round, get it to bunch up nicely, make sure the ends are going in. And again, I'll just sort of even it out a bit just to... Make sure it's sort of bunching, bunching somewhat evenly. Again, pushing the little, the little edges in. Managed to pick up a piece of green fluff in it. I think I need to maybe put one more stitch in. Let's do that. Then I'll finish on the inside. So take the needle back so that it's in the inside. Probably should have shown you on a larger version, but that's okay. I just wanted to show you at the size of the bead. So again, just make sure your um, raw edges are going down into your shape. That one I can just see where the end, where I started. I don't want to have be able to see that that end out and about. And then you might just need to sort of flatten it down a little bit. I'm just going to make sure that's sitting inside. And then again, pull it nice and tight once you've got it sort of in the shape that you want it to be. And again, put a couple of little anchoring stitches in to hold it nice and tight. So I'm going to just pull it tight. And then I'm just going to put a little knot stitch in. And then I'm going to put another little knot stitch in Oops. and thread it. That's okay. So I've got my two knots in and then I'm going to secrete the end just down into the yo-yo. I'm going to just take it down. Oops. Again, I'll just pull my thread through further than it needs to be pulled through and just chop off the little endy bit then let it spread out a bit and then that's your handmade yo-yo so you can get a pretty similar effect I think these ones just come out slightly neater although if you're a more precise hand hand maker one um, but yeah it gives you a nice little mostly um, circle again because this one's a bit more free handy it probably ends up with slightly more angular edges whereas this one because you're clipping it into into place it um, holds holds a bit better 
So I was going to, I'm just seeing where my piece of fabric, I had pre-cut a piece of fabric um, in the thicker, thicker stuff, but I'll use this one. This is just a scrap from the reverse art truck and I'll show you how to make these ones that have a bit more structure to them because they're particularly good for the brooch and I'll use my little yo-yo um, maker because it will make it easier. So again I'm just lining up my little little dot. It clips into place so you know that it's in the right spot and the reason it does that is so it can line up the little holes and make sure you're they line up with the holes on the, the front. So it's a pretty smart little, just two bits of plastic. And as I say, normally not a big one for buying plastics, but um, where it's something that makes the job even easier, um, it's a good thing. And so they, these are just the little fan, sample swatches that come on some of the larger bits of fabric that I get at the, the reverse art truck. So it's great to have a little project that yeah, works. You can get a couple out of one bit of bit of fabric. So again, I'll just put a knot in the end of my thread. Take the extra little taily bit off. And so again, I will hold hold my fabric down, and I'll start round where just past where my black dot is. Maybe I didn't put enough of a knot in, did I? Hopefully, that's going to hold. Might just go back through the fabric once and just make sure that knot's going to anchor properly. Okay, and then we'll continue our way around. Just make sure you are always catching the fabric. There's been a couple of times I haven't caught the fabric and then it won't, won't make a good little hold stitch. Your thread will sit in the wrong place. But always um, with your finger holding down the fabric at the back. As you can see, you can get quite, quite speedy doing it with this little template. Because it tells you exactly the spacing and it's got the exact places to put the needle. But definitely putting the dot helped because otherwise previously I was going and I was like, oh, have I gone all the, all the way around? But here I can immediately see when I'm getting back to the top and then I just do my one overlapping stitch. So you do get instructions with these little um, templates, but <laughs> the instructions aren't that well written, I don't think. So that's why I thought I'd at least demonstrate it. So if you do have one of these new little tools, you can see how it's, well, how I do it anyway. And so again, just tucking as you pull the thread, just tucking the raw edges into the, into the center. And as you can see with this um, thicker fabric, you get a really lovely, um, quite a, a shape that holds its shape. It really gives you, it's much easier to see on these ones, but quite a natural, it almost reminds me of little sea creatures. So I may well be using, yeah, these in my future texture pieces as well. It's a bit harder to see on this, this darker one. So actually I'll just pull it nice and tight and then I'll put the anchoring, a little anchoring stitch in. So a little knot and then I'll secrete it down into the piece. And I'll just take it back through um, to the other side and then I'll clip it off and that will sink back into the back into the piece. So that's like that. I'm just thinking um, and these very bright pink ones I made using again a synthetic um, fabric. It doesn't look that thick but it does um, give them quite a yeah quite a structural structural look and this one's made with a tapestry fabric I might show you one of those and I was thinking um, with this one I did it with this side as my outer but I might actually do one with this side so let's do that and then we'll move on to our um, making our braid necklace or our braid wrap for our brooch Which is super easy and a really great way if you've got strips of um, fabric that you might have trimmed off, um, even any of the um, selvage edges that you don't you don't need. Actually, I should probably do this closer to where my closer to where I did my other cut, just so I don't waste don't waste fabric. 
these ones will be sometimes a little bit harder to clip in just because the fabric's a bit um, a bit thicker. But again, you just got to line it up. So that's clipped in now. Oh, I've done it with the outside. I wanted to go the other way, didn't I? Christine, we will get there eventually. Where, where's my top? There's my top. Come on. Sometimes it just, as I say, it gets a bit tricky with these. There we go. Clipped in now. Clipped in. So again, I'll just trim around. With the thicker fabrics, yeah, you do want to get relatively close for the trim just because they do already have that, have that bulk. Put that little corner bit into my scraps. So I usually just use the white um, thread. The odd time you can see, like I can see just one tiny little bit of it there. Um, but you, yeah, you could use ones that match, but usually the white is fine because you don't really get to, to see it. So there's my black and so I'm just going to hold down at the back with my fingers and then we will just, oops, and again that doesn't want to hold so I might just do that, what I did on the last one, stitch through just to anchor it to start. And then around we go. Oops. Just make sure you don't do what I just did there, which one, um, put a knot in my thread, which isn't terribly helpful. Um, but two, if you can see, I um, went, I didn't go the way that I was actually meant to. So what have I done there? So we'll just start, we'll just start this one again. That's right, I've got to come through the first hole. I got myself confused because I did that little holding stitch and then I went over the outside. So you're always coming, in the first hole um, you're coming out so I've got to come out here and then go in but you'll quickly see it if there's any thread that's over the front of your template you know that you've you've made a body but it's truth in stitching with me you'll see the the good the bad and the ugly watching my friend Martha last night and yeah she was doing various knots and things as she sort of yeah extends her her stitching practice um, and yeah I like that she shows both when things work and when they when they don't so as she says it's all part of the the learning process I know there's many YouTubers where they will only kind of, yeah, show exactly when things go exactly to plan. There's all those sort of fast forwarded quick where they make it so quick that you don't even kind of know what they're even, even doing. But I like to do the, the real life stitching. So there's that one there. I'll just get rid of those little endy, endy bits that we don't want poking. And the same method again. We will just pull around, tucking the, tucking the edges in as we pull our thread. See, this would be a great nature's textures one. So again, just get the sort of shape that you want at the top. Make sure everything's nicely tucked in. Just have to re-thread my needle before I give it a final sort of pulling, pulling tight like that then I will just put a little holding a stitch in it's good because this has white in the design so we wouldn't even see the stitch even if I did do it um, sort of bigger and then I might just take it, the thread down and pop it out down here and again I can just do another little oops make sure it doesn't catch do another little holding stitch down here as well, a little notch, and then I can just take my thread back through and chop it off, and then the thread will sink, sink back in, and you get yeah this really lovely little structural, structural element. Let's get rid of those loose threads. 
put the lid back on my little jar of buttons and put that back over in my stand over here. So um, that is the Suffolk Puffs made with a variety of materials. Let's now make our beads and then we'll do our braid. So when I'm making the beads, I kind of sometimes made them in similar colours, like the blues and the whites. Sometimes I did a, a mix of different, different things. Um, there's even... Um, where's the big oh there's the there's the bright pink one but so yeah I think it's yeah it's fun you can either pick a color tone and you could make them all in the one but I was really just experimenting and seeing what I get I, I just need to close the blinds because the sun has just come um, quite brightly through the window and I think that's going to cause a bit of a bit of issues that will stop um, hopefully that will not be too dark now I hope the light will sort of sort of adjust I might just need to the blinds will stop swinging in the merest of moments so um, I might just pick three that I want to put together um, I also made these out of a very sort of um, gauzy synthetic fabric and they're, they're lovely and squishy they've got a really nice texture to them so what will I use? I might use that one that we made today. I'll put that with one of these ones. And maybe I will even use one of those nice little gauzy, gauzy ones. Or that's actually that same fabric. Maybe I'll use this purple. Yeah, I think those will be nice together. Um, again, I'll just use my white thread. I'll just get a bit more thread on my needle. This is just a chenille needle, I think. So very easy to thread. And so what I'm going to do is just hold two of these um, back to back. I'm going to take my needle into the center of one of them and pop it out. So it's not, um, it's not showing at all on the back. I've just gone through the center and popped out at the side with a knot in the end and I'll just cut off the end bit of the knot because I don't want to see that and I want to pull the knot down into the into the suffix puff if I can see I'm still got slightly caught there but I can probably tuck it tuck it in let's see if we can get it to properly go in I think it's almost there Okay, and so I'm going to put these two back to back. And then I'm going to get my needle and just pop over opposite to the other Suffolk puff and just do a little stitch forward inside the sort of side seam of the Suffolk puff. Come up and try and do it a bit closer to the camera if that will work. And so then I'm going to go across from where the thread came out to the other Suffolk puff and just do a little stitch going forward where the needle's going inside the little um, side of the Suffolk puff. So this is a ladder stitch and it creates an almost invisible stitch. So we're just popping to the other side and then just doing a little stitch forward, sliding through the inside of the fabric. And then again. And so with the beads you want to sort of go from about, if you're looking at it, about that point up to about that point. So you're just sewing just the sort of the sides of them slightly up to the top. So once I'm up here I'm going to pull my thread and tighten up the join and that's where um, the ladders stitches the little cross stitches almost disappear and then I'm just going to put an anchoring knot in at the very top and you can do a second one if you're at all worried that it might get loose. So I'm actually just doing a straight one across across there so you've now got um, something that's sewn together about that distance. So about from there to there, because you want to leave it. So you've still got an opening at the top and the bottom when the three of them get joined together. So now I then just travel my needle. I put my needle inside one of the Suffolk puffs and travel it over to the equal point across. So it's just the needles traveling inside the Suffolk puff. You won't see any thread on the front or the back. And then again, I will sit my two Suffolk puffs back to back 
and I'll do that same process of a ladder stitch. So I'll pop through the other side and just travel my way up that way. So you're getting stitches that go across and at the moment they're visible but once you pull the thread and tighten them they become almost invisible. So again use a relatively strong, like polyester is stronger than cotton, um, thread because you are giving it that little tug and you don't want it to give way and then have to redo your, your stitching. And if you want to see whether you've gone far enough, you can just kind of yeah compare compare the sides and see whether you think you need another stitch. I'll probably do one more stitch, I think. And then I'll do my tie. I'll do so I've done my stitch, I'll give it a pull, and as you can see, those little stitches that we could see before disappear. And keep it nice and tight, and then do your little anchoring stitch across. knot and then if you think you need it you can do a second little knot as well so yeah beautifully beautifully joined together um, and then we do the final one so this one will get sort of sandwiched across and then these two but first we need to travel our needle across inside our puff so I'm just going across the top of it but with the thread inside the suffix puff then again I'm going to put the two back sides of the Suffolk Puff or yo-yo together and then I'm just going to do my little ladder stitch Just have a look whether it looks about right. I think so. So now I can pull my thread, tighten up my ladder stitch, and then I can just do my little anchoring, anchoring stitch. I didn't knot that one, so I'm just going to knot this one. Oops, just unthreaded my needle. I'll just get that knotted first. And then I'll want to just re-thread my needle so I can secrete the end into, into the bead. So I'll just take the thread, the needle, I'm just going to pass it again inside the Suffolk puff over to the other, the other side. I'm just going to pull my thread sort of nice and tight so that when I snip it, it will just shrink back into the Suffolk puff and then we can add it to our necklace. Now if you are having trouble um, generally I can just sort of wiggle it wiggle its way through but if you do have trouble I do have a little way to show you and I'll show you because that way one it will make my job easier. Um, I've just got this little this is what I actually use with my punch needle to thread it. It's just a piece of wire with a little, um, I've bent, bent it up so it's got a little hook at the end, um, except I need to actually put it through the, put it through the bead first, then hook it onto what I want to thread through. Like that, close up my little loop. And then I can pull it through that way. And if you are struggling to get them on, it just probably means you've done um, a few too many stitches in the upwards, but you kind of get into a bit of a bit of a rhythm with it. And so, yeah, another beautiful um, bead on the necklace. And you could go all the way around, or as I say, you could just have a few of them. You can push them really up against each other if you want a sort of a tight tight necklace they feel amazing like really nice to touch you could also make little key rings with little strings of them christmas you could make little um, i might have to use that do that with some of my christmas fabrics it's also great when you've got fabrics that you just don't really love so i got some that were in a box of um, a whole lot of vintage haberdashery that i bought and there were some random fabrics that they threw in I really don't love this fabric at all, um, but I have been using it to make Suffolk puffs and I will probably use it to make some fabric um, braided 
plaited um, fabric rope because if I did it in those nice, um, yeah, reds, it would be great for Christmas, Christmas applications too. So let me now show you how to make the, um, the plaited braid and how you can extend strips of fabric um, to make it. And then we will see if we have time to, um, to make this one because I want to show you the necklace first and then we can, otherwise I can come back in another video if we're going past the, the hour mark. So I've just got some strips and they came off a pillowcase that I got at the op shop. And I got the pillowcase particularly because I liked the um, trim on the side, but the backs of it was just normal sort of um, cotton fabric. And so I've torn it into some strips. And because I want some extra long strips to get a nice um, length of um, plushing or braiding, I'm going to use my Yoohoo glue and just stick them together. Now you could stitch them together, but this is a this is meant to be sort of quick and easy and um, something that you can actually yeah, get done. I think I'll actually overlap them even a bit further, just gives them an extra bit of strength because then that gets kind of braided in and held in place. And don't worry too much about if it's slightly thicker there, um, unless you're really fussed about that, in which case you could do it on the angle um, if, if that really worried you. Just going to stick those. So we need three of them because we're going to be plaiting. Um, there's some great videos on um, making like a twine with uh, fabric scraps like K3N has done one recently. Um, so I thought I'd show you something different. And I think Marion's might have also done the twining recently. Um, I find that, yeah, the twining a little bit um, slower than this is a pretty quick way to, to make a make a, a fabric rope. So what you're going to want to do is get three ends of your of your twine, not your twine, of your um, fabric scraps. I like to sort of hang them off the desk and then I grab a pin and I pin it, my pin into the, the desk at the end of them even better if you can get it to hold down and then I just start the process of plaiting so if you've ever plaited your hair or plaited a child's hair um, you're just bringing the outside in on an alternating basis it's such a I've got such muscle memory about it I actually had to think oh how do I describe that and what I do with the ends is I make sure I'm sort of running my hand down as I go at least every couple of times and that way you won't get knotted ends um, because otherwise it will sort of do the plaiting effect at the end. And it's quite good if you did, even if you can do this um, standing up, because then you can kind of just have the ends hanging down a bit and they will not be as likely to get um, tangled. I'm just going to put this in on an angle so it holds even better. And so you can kind of do it as loose or tight. I, I like it pretty tight, so it becomes a pretty, um, pretty tightly plaited structure. So as you see, as you can see, you can do a few before you run your hand down, but you just want to periodically do that. Otherwise, you will end up with sort of tangles at the base. Or some people say then you have to use shorter lengths, but I like to have my full length just to work in one. Um, one click go. Now normally at this point I would just stand up and um, keep working but then you won't be able to see it so what I'm going to do is get another another pin and pin it down up there and then we can keep we can keep going. I should probably should go back this way that pin's bent a little bit but that's okay.
So I'm doing a few and then I'll just need to detangle my, my ends from each other. And so this is great to use um, in a whole range of applications. It's great to use as little ties on um, pouches or um, little slow stitch bags. Um, you can use it as I've sort of um, yeah, used in the brooch to make um, little structural, structural elements. It will be great in texture, texture art to be able to wrap other fibres around and create, again, create structure in that. I want to do some pieces with more of these little um, holes. It's that sort of negative space that makes things really, really interesting. need to pin again in a moment so you can continue to see as I plash. I just want to show you how long it does sort of take so you get a sense in real time. So I'm just pinning into my wool mat underneath in case you're wondering am I piercing into my actual table? No. Again, I find this very relaxing because again it's just one of those things where the hands know what they what they need to do so you can really just yeah relax into it lean into it and again if you don't want bulk you can actually um, do stick your bits of uh, fabric scrap together at different points and then you won't have that the bulk at the same point sometimes even it's taken care of in the plaiting process because it ends up slightly that way pins just pulled out let's just re-stick that back in sometimes the plaiting process helps distribute the joins to slightly different places but we shall see on this one And you can make the strips whatever thickness you want. Um, this is kind of what I've found to be a pretty, pretty good thickness. Different fabrics will give you more of a, or more or less of a sort of a frayed look. Um, I generally like to tear my fabric so I know that I'm getting a um, sort of an even, even strip. You could trim them. I mean, you could cut them with scissors, but you might end up with more strandy strandy bits so when I'm at this sort of join point I'm just going to take a bit of extra care and just make sure I'm well kind of getting everything to bind into itself trying not to get unknotted so this is what can happen when you don't just get a little bit of knotting and sometimes as you work your way down you've got some more threads as well coming off it you can just sort of pull any of these random side threads out or at the end you can just trim any that are sticking off um, out as well. So because we're just at the join point I'm just one pulling it extra tight and just making sure the little joiny bits get properly properly brought into the, the fabric and again my ends are wanting to knot a little bit. I think it is because there are loose um, bits. I'm just off camera just um, untangling the ends. See those ones have tried to knot themselves together. So I just want to get these little bits secreted. Secreted in. I might just go back, sorry. Because I've got a bit more sticking out from these than I want. So what I'm thinking is I might just give them a little twisteroo while I plait them in. Just gonna give them a little bit of a twist. Something there. I think it's actually because that end didn't fully plait in, so I've got a double, double endy bit. I probably should have used a tiny bit more glue, but that's okay. We'll be able to, we'll be able to remedy it. So again, here that's overlapping down that way that we don't want. That one's fine. Okay, where was I up to in my plaiting? So 
I'm going to just fold those ones in on itself and make sure this one doesn't fold down. a bit neater this time around. So as you can see it's just slightly thicker where there is that double double fabric but um, not not noticeably. And on the necklace where you're putting the beads this section because it's sort of in the middle would be um, yeah will be where you have beads so you won't even notice it. camera with my plashing so I'll just put another another pin in that we don't need so I hope you're having a great day or a great evening it is a nice day here blue skies, a little bit of cloud in the sky but mostly blue skies, that's why I had to close the blinds before because the afternoon sun was about to come blaring in which is lovely though as we get into the cooler weather of my craft room um, which is also my work from home room um, it gets beautifully warm in the afternoon so it's nice of an evening when yeah, the house might be a bit cooler but this, this room just yeah holds a nice bit of heat so I won't okay, I'll pin this again almost there. I am making a nice long length because that's what you will probably need. It depends what size you want your necklace to be but I think these are quite nice hanging down, hanging down necklaces. And you could use all different types of fabric. Um, I quite like these neutrals like from sheets or pillowcases um, because if you've got your beautiful color, colorful beads it's um, nice to have it contrasting. If you didn't want to make your own um, fabric scrap uh, necklace you could also just put them on a, um, a woven um, cord or something or put them on a regular sort of necklace. I've even got like a metal sort of um, solid band necklace that you can slide things onto. They'd even look nice on that. But again, they have lots of applications. You could use them as little dangles off your, your journals. Even thread, um, yeah, string them up and have them as a little yeah, journal closure, journal wrap. Make earrings out of them. Use them as little tops on pins. Let me know if you've got any other ideas. I'm getting very excited. Soon I'll be able to do another giveaway for my lovely subscribers. Um, I'm heading up towards another another round number, which will be very exciting. So if you haven't subscribed, it doesn't cost you anything, um, but it will get you closer to being eligible to have a lovely little um, giveaway. I've got two packages I'm, I'm planning to do as a giveaway this time. One for texture arts and one for slow stitching. Even though my sort of those two disciplines are kind of um, yeah combining for me now. I won't re-pin it, I'll just finish this off here. So we can show you how to make the either end of the necklace. And then yeah, I think we might do the other one, the little sort of textural brochy claspy piece. We can do that in a in a separate episode. Because YouTube doesn't seem to like when we go past the hour, the hour mark. Oh, 
not sure why. Then again, I shouldn't take too much of your time. But I know some of you like to put a video on, like me, and just, um, yeah, whether you're working away on your own project or you might follow, follow along. And then it is nice if it's in real time because it is actually then doable in real time. So I'm going to get my thread. In fact, I'll just borrow one of the pins for a moment and just pin down that end while I get a knot in my, in my thread. So this could have a threaded needle ready to go. But if you don't, you can just pin your, pin your ends down. So I'll start at this one. I'm just going to bring my thread through. And then I will probably just do some wrapping. Let me put my needle over there. So then I'm just going to wrap my thread around. Probably trim some of the endy bits off that I don't need. And I'll do some wrapping first and then I'll put some stitches through. So I'm just wrapping the cotton around the, the end. Put my needle twist around there and then I'm just going to take my needle through where I have put those wraps just to secure them in place. It can be quite tricky to get the, it sort of gets quite dense at this point, but that's where having a mat that you can help push your needle through with. And then what we can do at this end while I've got it threaded up, which will be a bit quicker, is how I make one end is I do a little, um, like a snail sort of wrap. And so seeing I've already got the thread coming from the center, I might start by putting a stitch through like that and then we can wrap our way around a bit so using my thing and I might even if I can see where my pliers are can I see my pliers yes um, I'll just use that to help pull the needle through and try not to catch my thread in the pliers. Okay, and I've just unthreaded my needle unhelpfully, but that's okay. And so you can make um, this little wrap sort of as big or small as you want. I don't mind them being a bit of a feature on the end of the necklace. So again, I'm just going to push my needle through if it will come through there we go can get tricky so if it's caught down the bottom on something or it's just being difficult just being difficult Oops, and there's threads in the way and then I'll just do one more one more wrap. I'll just try and tighten it up a bit as I go. And then again, I will just push my needle through. Make sure you're not pushing up into your finger. Make sure you know where the needle is going to come through. Don't want anyone to have any injuries. You could also, if you were struggling to um, get the thread to go through it, you could do little um, stitches across it or even sort of wrap stitches around and do smaller little stitches into it. I do just find this is the quickest and best way for me to get this bit done or you could also do a knot on the end of your um, like tie your um, your twine and put a knot in the end and use that as your anchoring it's just a bit more sort of bulky but you could also put that into um, that will also work to go into a little notch like that so that's an option if you're finding it too hard to stitch through your your rope or your braid And so at that point, I can um, just finish it off. I might just bring it down and over here. And then I can just put a finishing, finishing stitch in. And 
and tie that off. And then I need to unclip them and I'll need to put a knot in the end of my thread again. And we'll make our little, little loop. Again, I can just tighten it up a bit at this end. I can just cut off my random endy bits, bring my thread with its knot through, do my wrapping. And at that point I can get rid of a few more of the endy, endy bits. Then come through and um, go through where your knot is with the thread just to get it anchoring. And again, you can go a bit on this side if you can't get right through, um, yeah, right through where you are. And then I'll just come back and make a hole that's the right size for my little um, bobble to go through. So I just sort of test it by popping it through, and then I just um, yeah, stitch, stitch this into place. And again, you can wrap it if it, if you are finding it hard to get the um, the stitches through. I'd usually do one stitch first, and then if you want to do a bit of um, wrapping and then do a final final stitch of it. I think the threads just sort of add to the, the natural charm of it. So that's a quick way to get it to sort of hold in hold in place and then you just need to put a few few anchoring stitches in place and you can then tie it tie it off. Put a knot in place like that, trim it off. And so then this end can easily have the beads um, pass over it. You can straighten your your necklace out, and then that will just hold hold in place in your in your necklace. A little random bit of end there. And as you can see, even where you had the overlapping of your um, bits of fabric, it's not it's not a problem at all. Sorry for the bits of sun that are now shining in through the little gaps in the blind. So I hope you enjoyed that little. Um, show and tell and we'll come back and I'll show you this um, method of creating a more um, sort of structural brooch or embellishment or decoration um, that would be great to add to even slow stitch pieces as well. I'll be doing that in future slow stitch pieces. So yeah, I look forward to let me know in the comments if you're going to give this a go. I just think they're a lot of, lot of fun. Um, I loved my Oort beads, um, which I know many of you loved making as well. Um, and so this is just another great addition to have and I love that you can have different colours um, showing like you can actually turn these around to kind of make them whatever if you want a really bright pink you could have a have a bright pink so have fun with it and thanks so much for watching bye everyone